Welcome to Web Design Tutorials for HTML. This is lesson number 25, and in this lesson I'm going to talk about how to create a submit button and also how to create a reset button. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the previous document open from the previous tutorial. And once you have that open, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to look for is the text area that we created in the previous tutorial. And once you find that, we're going to hit the enter key a couple times and start creating our uh, submit button right after the text area. So go ahead and write angle bracket in the word input. And then for our HTML attribute, we're going to put type equals submit. And the reason we're calling it submit is because we're creating the submit button. Then hit the spacebar key and then write the word value equals and what the HTML value attribute is going to do is it's going to set a name value for that submit button. So we could call it send for this example. And then hit the angle bracket. And then let's go ahead and hit the enter key. And we're not going to use a line break because we want to have both the submit button and reset button on the same line. So go ahead and write angle bracket, then the word input, and type equals reset. And that's just the HTML attribute saying that it's going to reset the form using that input field if we need to reset the form. And then for our value, again, that's going to be the name that's going to show up on that reset button. So for example, I could call it reset form and then angle bracket for the end of that one. So once you're done, go ahead and hit control S and let's go ahead and preview this in our web browser. And as you can see, we have a send and reset form button right beneath our text area. So let's see how this would affect our web form. Let's say that I entered in some details into this form and I'm going to enter in a fictitious password, choose my gender, and I'm going to choose both keyboards and I'm going to enter in some fictitious data here for comments. So let's say that we filled in all that information and we realize that none of it's correct, which should never happen. You should know your name, you should know your gender, all that stuff you should already know. But assuming that you didn't for some reason, if you went down to this reset form button and clicked on it, you'll see that everything disappears. So it clears out the whole form. Now let's say that we enter this information in again, like so. And I'm going to enter in a comment and then I hit send. You'll see that, let me close this out first actually. You'll see that at the top of our uh, web browser that the URL is showing you how the web browser interp interprets that information. In other words, you can see user user login name equals Jim and password equals whatever gibberish I typed in and gender equals male and keyboard equals Roman plus phantom plus X8 and so on and so on and so on. So that's how the web browser interprets that information. But at this point, we haven't actually learned how to have that information actually go to our email. So don't worry if you know, you're wondering, like, how do I actually get this to go to my email? We haven't actually talked about that yet. And in fact, during the HTML series, we really won't get into the full process of that. I will show you one method you can use, but in my opinion, it's not a preferred method. But nonetheless, I'll show you how to do that in one of these HTML tutorials. But I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to embed, embed comment, share, and subscribe. And I hope that you stay tuned for future tutorials. Have a great day.